Happy St. Patrick's Day. As priest in charge, I welcome you all as we celebrate the fifth Sunday in Lent. Uh, we celebrate here at Trinity St. Paul's with St. John's and St. Simon's. And we're delighted to have those of you joining us on YouTube this morning. Everything that you need for worship is in your service bulletin. So come, let us worship. Blessed be the God of our salvation, who bears our burdens and forgives our sins. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit. We may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. the collect for the fifth Sunday in Lent. Almighty God, you alone can bring into order the unruly wills and affections of sinners. Grant your people grace to love what you command and desire what you promise, that among the swift and varied changes of the world, our hearts may surely there be fixed where true joys are to be found. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us pray the collect for St. Patrick of Ireland. Almighty God, in your providence, you chose your servant Patrick to, the, to be the apostle to the Irish people to bring those who were wandering in darkness and error to the true light and knowledge of you. Grant us so to walk in that way that we may come at last to the light of everlasting life through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the book of Jeremiah. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant that I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, a covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts. <clears throat> and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another or say to each other, Know the Lord, 
but they shall all know me, from the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sin no more. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> Blessed are you, O God, instruct me in your statutes. With my lips will I recite all the judgments of your mouth. I have taken greater delight in the way of your decrees, that in all manner of riches I will meditate on your commandments and give attention to your ways. My delight is in your statutes. I will forget, forget your word. A reading from the book of Hebrews. Christ did not glorify himself in becoming a high priest, but I was appointed by the one who said to him, You are my son, today I have begotten you. And he says also in another place, You are a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. In the days of, the fl of his flesh, Jesus offered up prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears in the one who was able to save him from death, and he was heard because of his reverent submission. Although he was a son, he learned obedience through what he suffered, and having been made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obeyed him. Having them designated by God a high priest according to the order of Mazachazadeh. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God.
of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory <coughs> to you, Lord Christ. Now among those who went up to worship at the festival were some Greeks. They came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and said to him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew. Then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who lost, love their life lose it. And those who hate their life in this world and keep it will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me. And where I am, there will my servant be also. Whoever serves me, the Father will honor. Now my soul is troubled. And what should I say? Father, save me from this hour? No. It is for this reason that I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. The crowd standing there heard it and said, It was thunder. Others said, An angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered, this voice has come for your sake, not for mine. Now is the judgment of this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out. And I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. He said this to indicate the kind of death he was to die. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord The Greeks came to Philip and said to him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. In the name of the living and loving and most magnificent God, amen. Please be comfortable. And once again, good morning, beloveds. Good morning. <clears throat> In today's gospel, we enter the story just as there's a lot of excitement in Jerusalem. People are pouring into the city for Passover. Jesus himself has just arrived triumphantly into the city with crowds waving palm branches and shouting hosannas along his path. Now I might add that this scene is what we will celebrate here next Sunday. Palm Sunday. But as, our, as people pour into Jerusalem, some of the foreigners, they ask to see Jesus. The word has spread, and they want to know how they too can, can come to know God. How they too can be a part of this Jesus movement that, that seems to be healing and helping and giving people hope. Sir, we wish to see Jesus, these foreigners say to Jesus' disciple, Philip. Philip immediately tells Andrew. And we then gain a glimpse of Jesus reacting with two of his disciples. For Philip and Andrew come to tell him the news that some Greeks have arrived asking to see him. 
And as he so often did, Jesus answers them directly. He answers them indirectly. Indirectly, he answers them. He doesn't say, send them away. He doesn't say, sure, let them come in. No, no, you see, instead, he takes the time to teach, to lay out a reality that his followers needed to understand. It was as if Jesus was saying, oh, they, they want to see me? Okay, I will let them see what I am all about. I will let them know what God is doing. So Jesus' reply to Philip and Andrew indicates his readiness for what will be his final days. And the climatic encounter between the ways of the world in the way of God. And Jesus tells them it's time for him to reveal what all humankind would see about him, about him and his role in the divine drama. The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified, Jesus says. Now, now this must have been this must have elated and excited his disciples, and the, and the Greeks too, if, if they heard him. Because these people surely thought that by being glorified, Jesus meant he would make all things well. Having recently experienced Jesus raising his friend Lazarus from the dead, Perhaps they thought he would work even greater wonders and bring an end to their difficulties in life. Or maybe they were thinking about one of the traditional expectations of how the Messiah would restore Israel by a glorious military victory. Maybe they thought it was time for him to, pre to prevail over all the world's kingdoms whose leaders would then cower before his conquering feet. Any such euphoria, however, it would have been short-lived. You see, it was a different kind of wonder that would be revealed, a different kind of conquest that Jesus had in mind. We all know it was the conquest of the cross. So Jesus immediately begins to lay out the hard truth of what lay ahead. In a similar way as we now worship one week away from Palm Sunday, our gospel reading lets us see what lies ahead for us in making the Holy Week journey. Now Jesus uses a parable to explain how not only Greeks, but everyone would see him. Unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, Jesus says, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Now here Jesus is explaining a simple rule of nature. A seed by itself is only a small piece of matter. If eaten, it provides a little bit of nourishment. If left in the blazing sun, it can dry up and lose all its value. If sealed in a jar, it can, retain, it can remain viable for centuries. But even then, even then it is only potentially powerful. But if it is buried, and if it dies beyond its present condition, it can release all that is contained within the very structure and substance 
of a whole stalk of ripened wheat, itself bearing more seeds. Now, of course, Jesus is talking about his own amazing sacrifice to come shortly, the sacrifice of his very life that comes from his resisting and overcoming the not-of-God powers of this world in a non-violent way. Making the greatest sacrifice that one person can give, Jesus led the way for us to the cross and beyond, overcoming evil and death, so that we need not be fearful in life or in death. Now, as an aside, some people refer to this fearlessness and courage and assurance of God's love that Jesus provides as our salvation, our salvation. But getting back to sacrifice, getting back to sacrifice, Jesus is also talking about the little sacrifices, the perhaps even minute sacrifices that we can make, that as followers of Jesus, we are all called to make on behalf of one another. To be so obsessed with what's going on with just your life means you're going to miss the signs of what is actually going on in the world. You see, you can't be attuned to the world around you, the the people around you, the societal dynamics, the power dynamics of the world, if all you're thinking about is what you need what you're going to get. Jesus is hyper-attuned to the people around him, and he has all these beautiful, beautiful one-on-one interactions of, of love, of healing and generosity, and simple kindness and understanding. So Jesus sets such a beautiful example for us of how to move about this world and what it means to to love our individual lives less than the life of the world and the community. And to be fully attuned to other people is not to not be attuned to yourself. It's not to not be attuned to yourself, but to include the attunement to the world, to the world around you, in the attunement to yourself as well. It's the deep knowing that you are connected to other people, that we're all interdependent. And that, like Jesus, we can try to bring more and more people into the sense of love and joy and hope that God wants for all of us, for all of us, to embrace everything that is love, everything that is healing in some way. Now, often... Often, people become of real use to God by burying their own goals, their own desires. Think about the saints. Think about your personal heroes. Aren't aren't they the ones who put aside personal safety and security for the sake of others? Whenever the world gains spiritual health, it often owes such a condition to those who spend their strength and give themselves away to God and to others. Now, my friends, my dear friends, as members of the three New Rochelle parishes, I see you all 
as saints and personal heroes. You have followed Jesus' example and buried former goals and desires of having things be separately the, the Trinity St. Paul's way right here and the St. Simon's way a mile away and the St. John's way further uptown. In our process of consolidating the three parishes as one, each parish legally is being dissolved. Each one is a grain of wheat laid lovingly and gently to the ground, dying in following Jesus. And through attuning yourselves, attuning yourselves to the realities of church life in a post-pandemic world, your sacrifice, your sacrificing that which is familiar, your letting go of what has seemed until just a few years ago so secure. These three seeds are in the process of being buried so that they can release the sacred power within, rising up as a glorious new church, as Trinity Episcopal Church, with new strength in unity to better serve one another and the greater community. Now this, my friends, is the kind of risk-filled living that the love of God requires. This is the prototype that Jesus sets for us in today's gospel with himself as the perfect example. So yes, the, the world teaches us to look out for number one, but Jesus teaches that, that real living Genuine, meaningful living involves so much more. Only by spending our lives, Jesus says, can we keep our true lives. Jesus calls us into a give-it-away faith. He calls us into a realm not of our ordinary world, but into one that stands in sharp contrast. That is, Jesus calls us into the world of God. Jesus calls us beyond the common selfish goals of false security. He calls us to, to see him amongst us, to see his vision, to see a new view of life, a life of meaning and of glory. Now, unlike the rest of the world, Jesus viewed glory not as the acquisition of power, but he looked at glory as the ability to serve others for a greater purpose. He taught that only by spending life well can we retain it. Only in this context can we do what the Greeks hoped to do, to see Jesus for what he is for the world. Only in the context of dying to self and living in God can we see the essential Jesus. Only in this way can we see him for what he really is, the living image of God. Now, my friends, as we move rapidly toward Holy Week, may we come as the Greeks came before the Lord, asking to see Jesus, to discover what he is all about. As we witness the ultimate example Jesus provides, we can follow him into a life of true meaning and become transformed, transformed by what we see. So yes, may, may our hearts 
and voices ever cry out, please, please, we wish to see Jesus. Amen. So please, please stand as you are able. And let us affirm our faith together in the ancient words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate of the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he has worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please remain standing or kneel as you are able. O oh God, you have promised to hear when we pray in the name of Christ. Therefore, in confidence and trust, we pray for the church. We pray for the health and continued healing of Michael, our presiding bishop, for Matthew, Alan, and Mary, our bishops, and for all bishops, priests, and deacons. We pray for all the parishes and ministries of the Diocese of New York. O oh God, our God, enliven the church for its mission, that we may be the salt of the earth and light to the world. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for the world. We pray for refugees throughout the world, within our land and at our borders, that they may be treated with compassion in their search for safety. We pray for those who help the less fortunate. Creator of all, lead us and every people into the way of justice and peace, that we may respect the dignity of every human being. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. With war and conflict around the world, especially in the Holy Land and Ukraine, and ever-increasing gun violence in our land, we pray you, O oh God, to guide the nations of the world into the way of compassion, justice, and truth. Establish among us that peace which is the fruit of righteousness, that we may become the kingdom of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Awaken in us a sense of wonder for the delicate earth and all that is in it. Fill us with the wisdom and will to protect and conserve it for the sake of generations to come. We pray for those here and around the world suffering from natural disasters. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for the greater community, its leaders, and for all in authority. We pray for Joseph, our president, 
and Kamala, our Vice President, for Kathleen, our Governor, for members of Congress, the Judiciary, and for all our civic leadership. God of truth, inspire with your wisdom those whose decisions affect the lives of others, that all may act with honesty, integrity, compassion, thoughtfulness, and courage. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for social change in a world diminished by racial injustice. We ask for courage, strength, protection, and blessings for all who work toward justice for all, as well as bridging our human divides. Grant, O oh God, that your holy and life-giving spirit may so move every humble heart, and especially the hearts of the people of this land, that barriers which divide us may crumble, suspicions disappear, and hatreds cease, that our divisions being healed, we may live in justice and peace. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Give grace to all whose lives are linked with ours. We pray for the 12-step AA groups, for Meals on Main Street and the Brown Bag Lunch Program. We pray for those celebrating birthdays this week, especially Candy Ganus, Aisha Ibrahim Alpha, Hazel Mayer, Bernice Coleman, and Owen Omareji. May we serve the Christ in one another and love as Christ loves us. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for those in need, especially those who have asked for our prayers. Danielle, Ernesta, Sarah, Judy, Charlotte, Margarita, Emmanuel, Alma, Deacon Bill, Eli, Lisa, Warren, Thomas, Patricia, Sigrid, Kathy, Barbara, Brenda, Ellis, Shirley, Eudice, Kashida, Selena, Joyce, Winifred, Millicent, Arden, and all those we remember at this time, either silently or aloud. We give thanks for and we pray for our homebound parishioners, Vivian Evans, Lorna Davis, Lucent Gittens, Iris Cassis, Dorothy June Shetterer, Hazel Mayer, Pearl Carter, Joseph Amato, Jean Capalbo, Joan Jurgen, Corinne Ganus, Irene Schindler, Ray Picacus, Roddy Steigman, Ursuline Callender, Johnny Jessamy, Carmen McCullen, and Beryl Battle. God of hope, comfort, and restore all who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. We, may we all know the power of your healing love. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We remember with thanksgiving those who have died. We pray especially for Upton Gordon, Sean Joseph, the people due to violence in the Holy Land, and for those whose names we bring before you now, either silently or aloud. Loving God, into your hands we commend them. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Give comfort to those who mourn. Bring them peace in their time of loss. We praise you for all your saints who have entered into eternal glory. May their example inspire and encourage us. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Let us pray for the mission of our three sister Episcopal parishes of New Rochelle, St. John, St. Simons, and Trinity St. Paul. O oh God, you manifest in your servants the, sign of your, the signs of your presence. Send forth upon us the spirit of love that in companionship with one another in our three parishes of New Rochelle, your abounding grace may increase among us as we become one. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. 
We pray for ourselves and our ministries as we seek to enhance the spiritual vitality of our congregations through collaboration in the way of love. O oh God, you have called us to serve you. Grant that we walk in your presence, your love in our hearts, your truth in our minds, your strength in our wills, until the joy of our homecoming and the welcome of your embrace is alive in us through Christ, by whom and in whom all things are possible. Amen. Let us now confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. My friends, the peace of the Lord be always with you. And let us greet one another with the peace of Christ. Uh, once again, good, good morning, good morning to all of you. Um, 
So we welcome our newcomer this morning. We're very delighted to have her here with us. Um, and uh, we will have prayer ministers at the back of the church offering prayers of healing and thanksgiving. So if you'd like to join uh, our prayer ministers uh, in praying for yourself, for someone you love, uh, during communion, uh, we, we uh, hope that you will take that opportunity. After service today, we, have, uh, we hope you will enjo uh, join us for a special hospitality in the parish hall as we celebrate uh, St. Patrick's Day uh, with an Irish meal of corned beef and cabbage. And uh, it's hosted by Christiane Kniff. Uh, so um, we, we give great thanks to, to Christiane for, um, for hosting today. During hospitality hour in the parish hall chapel, there will be episode six of The Chosen. If we want to know Jesus, uh, it's a really great opportunity to know more of Jesus in that uh, great uh, uh, series. And uh, a short discussion will follow the, the, the film. Uh, again, many thanks to Antonio Marin and to Mother Deborah Lee for um, for coordinating all of that. Also, um, we've got a lot happening. Um, St. Simon's Vestry will be meeting 12.45 or 1 o'clock um, in the uh, Trinity St. Paul's Library uh, to discuss some uh, regular business. And um, then moving on into this week, uh, there will be no book group this Wednesday or the following Wednesday. It will resume uh, April 3rd after Easter. I uh, encourage you to come out for Wednesday evening prayer uh, on Zoom. At uh, 6.40 we begin and a uh, lovely um, conversation before 7, at which time we begin with prayers and hymns and uh, always lovely reflections. So I encourage you to join us. We have choir rehearsal here Thursday night at 7.30. Um, tomorrow night, Trinity St. Paul's executive team will meet at 7.30 on Zoom. And Tuesday night, Trinity St. Paul's vestry will meet at 7.30 on Zoom. You should all have the Easter flower tribute form, yeah? in your service bulletin, so please fill those out today and get those in. Uh, we have a deadline of Thursday, so those of you who are watching on YouTube, please send in your forms, um, uh, hopefully arriving by Thursday. We want to get uh, them in as early as possible so we can make sure we have all the appropriate tributes in the Easter bulletin, so please um, get your tribute forms in. Um, and you also, Trinity St. Paul's, has a stewardship letter with a 2024 pledge card attached. Uh, myself, Deacon Hyacinth, the wardens and vestry, we ask you, uh, all, the executive team with uh, also our treasurer, Arisua, we ask you um, to uh, take a look at the letter, take a look at the pledge card, um, pray over it, and um, you, we are still three parishes, and we also all three have our own operating expenses to consider uh, the rest of this year. So your pledge is extremely important, as important as it ever was. And so we are uh, grateful for all you've given, uh, and we ask that you pray and um, uh, consider your 2024 pledge and, and submit those. I know uh, St. Simon's has already had their uh, a stewardship uh, drive with their pledge cards. Uh, St. John's is uh, lagging behind a little in, in process, but uh, Trinity St. Paul's, you are um, ready to begin the stewardship drive for 2024. Um, Holy Week, Holy Week is upon us, and uh, on page 15 of your service bulletin, it shows all the many, many offerings we have, 
beginning next Sunday, Palm Sunday, and uh, going through the week, Holy Week, we have something going on every single day between next Sunday and Easter Sunday, except for Holy Monday. Um, so please take a look at all that is available, and we ask that you please come out uh, as we you, you, we want to see Jesus. Uh, this is a great opportunity for us to see Jesus together uh, during Holy Week, walk the holy journey with Jesus. And then, um, uh, so we hope that you can be with us. And um, Beverly from uh, Episcopal Church Women, ECW, has uh, saved the date announcement. Um, you all should have uh, a little bit in your uh, serve on the the um, insert uh, about the uh, upcoming event that Beverly is going to share. Good morning. I have two announcements. In the absence of Dawn Ward, one of the teachers for Sunday school, I am asking that and reminding parishioners and friends to please think of the Easter egg hunt on Easter Sunday. Sundays. March 31st, please bring your plastic eggs. You know, some of us still do the regular eggs and dye them for our family members. But for the church, please bring plastic eggs with the candy. And a little secret, there are a couple of us who sometimes put in a dollar or two with the candy, much to the delight of the children, because they're only expecting candy. So when they see money, they get all excited. So on behalf of Don Ward and the other Sunday school teachers, please participate in this. Thank, uh, thank you for that. Now, for ECW, as Mother Jenny said in the bulletin, there is a copy of the flyer, but for the sake of space, what is missing is the lovely flags. Maybe between now and April 13th, which is International Day, we will have room for one page and you will see it. Uh, I also have tickets that are available. And this year, with our secretary, we got very creative. Instead of just the writing with the black and white information, we have people sitting at a table in color. So remember, ECW, all the profits that we make and everything that we do is donated to the church. So if you are unable to come to our international dinner on April 31st from 6 to 10, please make a donation. Thank you. So, um, let's give Beverly a hand. Um, uh, as uh, we also uh, give a hand to ECW, uh, Beverly being the chair of ECW, and um, we're very grateful for Beverly and all of ECW and the great ministry that they provide for us, uh, our three parishes here. So now, um, birthdays, anniversaries, travel, uh, anyone wanting to... Uh, Come up for a blessing for your birthday or for travel or for an anniversary. Do we have some travelers? Birthday. Birthday. And traveling. Are you traveling? So, um, Kemi, why don't you come over here with Dr. Allwell? And um, let us uh, give a blessing for Olive for her birthday. So all please raise your hands uh, in blessing. O oh God, our times are in your hand. Look with favor, we pray, on your servants with birthdays this week, especially Olive, as they begin another year. Grant that they may grow in wisdom and grace and strengthen their trust in your goodness all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. And all of the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Christ, and the Holy Spirit be with you now and always. Amen. Amen. And now we have travelers. Uh, Dr. Allwell, can we ask where you're going? I'm going to Canada. Canada. Nice, nice, nice. Good. I hope it's for fun. Yeah. Good, exactly. good, good. And uh, Kemi, you are? 
going back to Nigeria. And I might add, uh, Kemi, a friend of uh, our dear Adi Sua, uh, has been here uh, representing Nigeria for Women's Week at International Week at um, the United Nations. So we are very blessed to have Kemi here with us um, and her representation and that important ministry that that is. So let us raise our hands in blessing. O God, our heavenly parent, whose glory fills the whole creation and whose presence we find wherever we go, preserve those who travel, surround them with your loving care, protect them from every danger, and bring them in safety to their journey's end, through Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Christ, and the Holy Spirit, Mother, be with you now and always. Dr. Yes. Owen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Christ, and the Holy Spirit, will be with you now and always. Amen. 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 Uh, so Beverly has another announcement. Okay. Thank you all. Let's give a hand to uh, our birthday and our travelers. I am back. Easter is March 31st. When I made the announcement about the international dinner, I still had that on my brain. The international dinner is April 13th. And what I also neglected to say, that as those of you who have been here for whatever length of time, you know that on the international dinner we get dishes from different places, different countries, different cities, etc. And as in the past, we are asking you to donate a dish from your country of origin, or if not, a country that you like, that you have visited, and you may want to do a dish for that. So Coffee Hour, myself and other ECW members will be happy to take what you would like to donate and tickets. Thank you. Thank you, Beverly. My friends, walk in love as Christ loves us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God.
The Lord be with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. You bid your faithful people cleanse their hearts and prepare with joy for the Paschal Feast, that fervent in prayer and in works of mercy, and renewed by your word and sacraments, they may come to the fullness of grace, which you have prepared for those who truly love you. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. To you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for all for the forgiveness of sin. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ and bring us to that heavenly country where with blessed Mary the God-bearer, Saints Simon, John, and Paul, our patrons, and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, 
the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By Christ, and with Christ, and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. My friends, the gifts of God for you, the people of God, take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. The blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. Christ, Amen.
please stand as you are able. And let us pray together. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. Bow down before the Lord. Look with compassion, O Lord, upon this your people, that rightly observing this holy season, they may learn to know you more fully and to serve you with a more perfect will through Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Christ, and the Holy Spirit Mother be among you and remain with you always. Amen.
Finlandia. Put yourself here. people like that.